Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. This is a game that I've put way too much time in over the course of pretty much the past six years. I'm talking about normal retail World of Warcraft. Obviously, Classic came out more recently, but I thought it would be fun for the channel here to do a series where I complete the entire Undead Starting Zone because it's something I've always wanted to do in WoW, play the classic original Undead Starting Zone. And I thought to myself, why not make a video series out of it? Now, obviously, WoW is a pretty old game. Classic is based on what the game was like when it first released back in like 2004 slash 2005. And it's been continuously updated over the course of the past like 16 years now, right? It's a game that I feel like for a lot of people is a bit overwhelming. Perhaps you've heard about WoW, perhaps you've heard your friends play it, but you always thought to yourself, there's too much to that game, right? It's been out for like 16 years, continuously updated. I would not really have an idea of where to start or how the game even works. It's just, it's way too much, right? So I thought for my viewer base here on the channel, it would be fun to do a little bit of a video series here doing the starting zone for my personal favorite race in Classic, the Undead. I played Undead in normal World of Warcraft as well. And I think it'd be good because you guys can see the game in its barest form and kind of get an idea of what the game is actually like, and then maybe you want to try it out for yourselves. So we're going to be playing as an undead warlock and make this female like my actual character and while I play a female warlock. Um, I played a goblin rogue for many, many, many years. Obviously, goblins are not here right now. They came out in the Cataclysm expansion. But uh, yeah, I played a goblin rogue forever, stopped playing WoW for a bit, and then when I came back, I decided, you know what, I think it would be super fun to play a warlock, because the warlock was actually my first ever character when I first started playing. What got me into WoW in the very first place was actually Hearthstone, right? Hearthstone's a card game based off of WoW, and after playing Hearthstone for so long, I got really interested in the characters of the cards that I was playing, and so I started like Googling the characters, reading up on them, and eventually I started playing WoW, and... Here I am six years later, still playing the game quite a bit, though. I never really post it on the channel, so I thought it'd be fun to do this series here. We're going to go with this setup right here. I think that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, change the hair color a little bit. There we go. We're going to go ahead and rock that. Now, typically, this name is available on pretty much every single server. And to quickly um, go ahead and like, give you guys a brief overview, there are two factions in WoW, and these factions are basically constantly at war. You have the Horde and the Alliance. Four races comprise the Horde, the Brutal Orcs, the Shadowy Undead, the Spiritual Tauren, and the Quick-Witted Trolls. And then for the Alliance side, the Alliance consists of four races, the Noble Humans, the Adventurous Dwarves, the Ignomatic Night Elves, and the In genius gnomes right so basically two factions on either side of the world they're constantly kind of in strife with each other but i mean that's not really the biggest part of wow the pvp aspect is interesting but it's all the other stuff that you can do there's so much to the game whether it's questing leveling up professions which are like jobs within the game the auction house and gold making and the entire economy that exists in every single server of course there is pvp there's so much to do in the game that can be addicting i actually have an add-on on retail wow where I added up the playtime across all my characters over the course of the past six years. And it's something to the effect of like 300 days of playtime. WoW, in my opinion, is the ultimate casual, relaxing game that can also be challenging. It can also be anything you want it to be. Like, it's an entire massively multiplayer online game. It's an MMO. And you can do whatever you want within the game, and it's addicting as hell. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and make our character here. Firestone, I uh, picked that name for my Warlock because there's three different kinds of Warlocks. You have Destruction, you have Demonology, and then Affliction. Destruction Warlocks are all about fire. That's my favorite spec. Uh, Affliction is about damage over time and, like, shadow damage. And Demonology is about summoning demons into the world, which is interesting. And just to kind of show you guys this one more time really quickly, of the races that you have, obviously it's going to be a little bit different on regular regular World of Warcraft for the Battle for Azeroth expansion and of course Shadowlands which is coming up soon but basically there's a bunch of races for each side and then all the races have individual classes that they can be there's a set number of classes within the game like for example humans can be six different classes whereas gnomes can only be four undead can only be five they can be warriors they can be rogues they can be priests which are either healers or damage dealers you have mages which are only damage dealers there's different kinds of mages different kinds of warlocks which are damage dealers uh, warriors, which could be tanks, which tanks are the people that take damage in dungeons and raids and things like that. Or they can be damage dealers that mainly focus on killing the things out in the world and in raids and stuff like that. 
So lots of different classes. And it's fun. And it's addicting, right? So when I first started playing, my first ever character was a warlock. And then I played that for a bit. I'm like, you know what? I think I might like melee a little bit more. So I started playing a rogue. And then after playing the rogue for a while, I'm like, huh, I want to try healing, right? And then maybe after that, I wanted to try tanking. And, you know, I really like playing as a melee DPS rogue. Let's try a melee DPS death knight, for example, which is not currently and not obviously available in um, World of Warcraft Classic, but that came out in the Wrath expansion. Um, the game's addicting. Like, once you think you, like, understand a class, you've mastered, like, different things you can do with it, uh, then you start playing these other classes, and it's really, really fun. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and jump into the Undead Starting Zone for World of Warcraft Classic Undead Edition. Bound to the iron will of the tyrant Lich King, the vast undead armies of the Scourge seek to eradicate all life on Azeroth. Led by the Banshee Sylvanas Windrunner, a group of renegades broke away from the Scourge and freed themselves of the Lich King's domination. Known by some as the Forsaken, this group fights a constant battle, not only to retain its freedom from the Scourge, but also to slaughter those who would hunt them as monsters. With Sylvanas as their Banshee Queen, the Forsaken have built a dark stronghold beneath the ruins of Lordaeron's former capital city. This hidden undercity forms a sprawling labyrinth that stretches beneath the haunted woods of the Tirisfal Glades. Though the very land is cursed, the zealous humans of the Scarlet Crusade still cling to their scattered holdings, obsessed with eradicating the undead and retaking their homeland. Convinced that the primitive races of the Horde can help them achieve victory over their enemies, the Forsaken have entered an alliance of convenience. Harboring no true loyalty for their new allies, they will go to any lengths to ensure their dark plans come to fruition. As one of the Forsaken, you must massacre any who pose a threat to the new order, human, undead, or otherwise. What an introduction, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is try to get rid of all the add-ons. So what's actually cool about World of Warcraft in general is it's so customizable in terms of the add-ons and all the crazy things you can do with your user interface and really try to tailor the experience to be as much as you would like it as possible, which is really fun. So as an undead, you're basically a former human, obviously, and you are here in Tears Fall Glades. Basically, you were a citizen of Lordaeron, which was one of the many kingdoms that the humans had here in the Eastern Kingdoms, and you died, and you've been resurrected as a member of the Forsaken, which is part of the Horde. Horde primarily take place over in Kalimdor. These, this is like the world map for Classic. There's Kalimdor, and, there's, and then there's the Eastern Kingdoms. All the way down here in the Elwyn Forest, like this is where Stormwind is going to be. That's the capital for the humans and the Alliance in general. And then in Kalimdor, we have Orgrimmar, which is going to be in the zone of Duratar. Like right up here is going to be Orgrimmar itself. Obviously, we don't have anything unlocked because we haven't explored anything as of right now. But uh, yeah, so it's an MMORPG, you know, massive multiplayer online role playing game. So definitely pretty cool. And the class we chose today is going to be Warlock. We have a couple of abilities here. I'm going to try to explain this as best I can for basically everybody that's like new to the game. Even if you've played WoW for a number of years, if anything, this is going to make for some nice like background noise while you play. So as the undead, you start off with one ability. It's going to be called Shadow Bolt. It has a cast time, but it's going to deal shadow damage to your target, causing 12 to 16 damage. We're going to go ahead and put that there. And auto attack by default is on your bars. You don't really need that. You just right click, basically, and that's going to start your auto attacking. We also have a couple of things in our bags. We have this mushroom cap, which is going to be something we can eat, which is going to heal us over time. And then we have spring water, which is going to restore mana. We have health up here, 63 health. And that's our mana. Mana is what we use to cast our spells and other abilities. Health is obviously health. I think you guys understand that well enough. So let's go ahead and enable sound effects as well as music. There we go. And let's go out into the world here. Ladies and gentlemen, Undertaker Mordo. It's going to be right here. The Rude Awakening. About time you woke up. You, We were ready to toss you onto the fire with the others, but it looks like you made it. I am Mordo, the caretaker of the Crypt of Death Knell. You are the Lich King's slave no more. Speak with Shadow Priest Sarvis in the chapel at the base of the hill. He will tell you more of what you need to know. So, 
So how World of Warcraft works, essentially, is a lot of it is leveling and questing, right? You go through the different zones and the different areas, and you quest to level up, and by leveling up, you gain experience. When you gain experience, you can talk to trainers, and then you can unlock all sorts of different abilities. Right now, we have basically nothing. We have Shadow Bolt, and we have Demon Skin, which is an ability that we can use, which is going to increase our armor and restore three health for five seconds for 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and activate that there. And now we have a little bit of extra armor and we're regenerating health. We press C here, we can see the uh, gear that we have. Armor, it's all pretty much explained like right here, but armor is going to reduce the physical damage that you take. Um, strength is going to increase your attack power with melee weapons. Agility is going to increase your attack power with ranged weapons. Stamina is the amount of hit points you have. It's very much an old school RPG game in this respect. Intellect is going to be how much mana points you have, as well as your chance to score a crit with spells, which is good. So basically, you want intellect if you're going to be a caster that's going to be casting spells like a warlock does. So you want intellect as well as spirit. That gives you health regeneration and mana regeneration. Then armor decreases damage taken from physical attacks, like I mentioned earlier. But right now, we just have, like, starting gear, very low stuff in general. We don't really have any abilities. We have really nothing, right? We do have a racial here called Cambalize, which is exclusive to the Forsaken, which is going to allow you to regenerate 7% of your total health every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. So basically, if you can channel it for all 10 seconds, you'll regain 35% of your maximum health. Basically, you eat something, or you kill something, then you can eat it because you're an undead, you're a forsaken, you're a cannibal, essentially, and you can go ahead and do that. So, we're going to go ahead and just put that on the bar. Um, I could activate the bars for up here. Again, the UI is very, very um, customizable. We're just going to put that over there. We don't really need to have these things on our bars right now because we can just open up the bag and we can eat and drink whenever we want to. And then our other racial passives are going to be underwater breathing, so we can breathe longer underwater because we're undead. We don't really need to breathe underwater, and we also have more shadow resistance. Oh, I, I forgot about Will of the Forsaken. How could I forget that? It provides immunity to charm, fear, and sleep effects while active. You can also use it when you're already put asleep, feared, or charm to kind of get rid of that, which is nice. We're going to go ahead and put that right there. All right. <clears throat> So the quest set at the very base of the hill. Now in World of Warcraft Classic, it's a lot more streamlined nowadays in 2020. Like there'd be a marker on your map kind of telling you where to go and everything. But in World of Warcraft Classic, you kind of had to read all the quest text and stuff because it didn't, doesn't really tell you where to go on the map. It just says, check out the chapel at the base of the hill. And so we go all the way down here. And keep in mind, this game was designed in 2004. We're playing the classic version of the game. Um, I'm going to quickly put some footage over your screens right now. Like, this is me playing some PvP on my actual character in Retail, as it's called, World of Warcraft, which is like the current game. And obviously, a lot more abilities, a lot more custom UI, a lot more things going on, and a lot more things to do. And the game that we're playing now is WoW Classic, which is the game as it was back in like 2004 slash 2005 when it first came out. So when you are a new player to WoW and you see like newer footage like this, you're like, wow, that's a lot of buttons. I'm not sure what's happening. It's hard to watch World of Warcraft gameplay, right? Especially when you don't under, like, you've never played the game before. So I thought it'd be fun to go to uh, Classic here, which is like the most bare bones, simple simplistic version of the game and here's going to be shadow priest sarvis go ahead and talk to him forsake. no other race on azeroth has suffered as much as our people warlock to laugh in the face of death has become second nature for all of us another of the walking dead oh good show must have been quite a shock waking up in a crypt with only the cold and mordo to greet you i see the confusion on your face let me try to explain our situation to you we have been freed from the control of the Lich King by our new leader, Lady Sylvanas. Sylvanas is actually Sylvanas Windrunner, who's a huge character in the World of Warcraft lore. And um, obviously a legendary card in Hearthstone as well. So I was like interested to learn about her when I first started getting into WoW. The Dark Lady guides us in our war against the hated Scourge and the holdouts of humanity who dog our every step. Trust no one. So for completing that quest, we got some under reputation with the Undercity, which is like the main city for the Forsaken. And we also got a little bit of experience. Here's going to be our experience bar right here. 
And he has a quest for us here, the Mindless Ones. We Forsaken are at war with the Lich King's army of the Scourge. Necromantically, wow, that's a word, raised armies of the undead, foul beasts of the north, and tormented specters. The northern part of the village has become overrun with the Mindless Ones, and they must be destroyed. Destroy them, show them no mercy, our former brothers and sisters as they might be. The Fallen are nothing but the Lich King's slaves. So basically, he wants us to kill eight Mindless Zombies and eight Red wretched zombies and for completing the quest we'll be able to choose between one of these two rewards a cloak or gloves as well as we get 17 copper which if you go ahead and i open up the uh, bag right here we have zero copper there's copper which every 100 copper turns into one silver and every 100 silver turns into one gold that's how the currency works in this game and you can use that stuff to buy things from vendors which are npcs or you can use it to buy stuff off the auction house or talk to other players in the game because it is an mmo and you know buy and sell things with other players as well let's go ahead and talk to venya marthand here I haven't got all piercing the veil my brother loves to band pierce the veil he actually has a pierce the veil tattoo but greetings child I can see that you are still young in the ways of the warlock. Power is still eluding your grasp. I can sense your eagerness to learn, and you will learn. There is no strength in ignorance. Knowledge is our greatest power. Through its application, we can control the chaotic magics and beings of the void, bending them to our will. I'll show you how to bind a servant to your will, but first you must bring me three skulls of the rattle cage skeletons near the abandoned smithy. Okay. And if we do that, that's going to teach us how to summon an imp, which is going to be our very first demon. And demons are pets that we have that do damage for us and follow us around and help us out. So that's actually pretty sick. And then here's going to be a warlock trainer, Maximilian. So when you talk to the trainers, um, I'm going to do unavailable here just to kind of show you some things. Um, that's not all of them, but here are some abilities that we could that we're going to be able to learn later on, like corruption, curse of weakness, life tap, emulate or emulate rather, and then shadow bolt rank two. Which, as we go up the different ranks of our spells, they become more and more powerful. Again, this is a very old school style RPG. So if we open this up here, we're gonna go ahead and track that. Oh, shift clicking. Okay, we're going to track that and track that, so our uh, things show up here underneath the mini map. So we have to kill mindless zombies and wretched zombies and also rattle skull cages. So here's one of the mindless zombies, for example. Cast a shadow bolt. Now watch as I lose my mana as I attack it. It's only level one, so it's not going to hit all that hard. But the thing about WoW Classic compared to like regular WoW is uh, you lose mana very quickly and it takes a little bit to come back. And when you kill things, you of course can pick up stuff off of them if they do in fact drop something. It dropped us some uh, bracers of uh, gray quality, which is by far the worst quality. There's grays, then there's whites, then there's green. No, okay, this is like the order of worst to best, right? There's gray, then white, then green, then blue, then purple, then orange, with orange being legendary. But at this level, we don't even have any bracers. So the fact that our very first mob dropped us bracers is great because we can equip that to our character. And as you can see, when you add stuff to it, like look at the character panel right here. If we take off the robe, for example, we have nothing on right there. So go ahead and just equip that and equip our bracers, which gives us more armor, which means these zombies are going to be doing less damage to us, which is fantastic. And let's go ahead and just shadow bolt. It's kind of fun being a ranged DPS which is uh, damage per second is what that stands for, because you can stay away and do a good amount of damage before they can even do anything. And right there, if you shift click, if you shift, shift and then right click, you can just automatically loot all the stuff. And this fella here dropped us uh, ragged leather pants. But here's the thing, they're leather. We can't wear leather as a warlock. So to quickly show you this again, I'm trying to like do a, a, like a full breakdown here for pretty much everyone. Um, oh, it doesn't actually show it right here? Interesting. So it shows it in like retail World of Warcraft, but it doesn't seem to show it actually here whatsoever. So if you're a warlock, you can basically only wear cloth. You can only wear cloth uh, armor. You cannot wear leather. You can't wear plate or chain mail or anything like that. So basically, we're going to have to just sell that to a vendor for whatever it's worth. Oh, we resisted. Move away. Go for this. And as we, if we get hit while we're casting, you'll notice the cast bar actually goes back a little bit, which is kind of frustrating. It makes casting a little bit more annoying. And there we go. So there's some chain mail right there. That'd be fantastic. If we were playing like as a warrior or something, this would just be great. And notice how we're actually getting progress over here on the side. My 
And right now we have no mana, so we're just going to go ahead and right click and basically auto attack, which does three damage, three damage, three damage. It's pretty bad, right? So best case scenario, you're not going to be auto attacking really all that much. And go ahead and get this guy while he's kind of further away. Oh, he's going towards the guards, which means he's going to die immediately. And when the guards kill him, they die super quick. Notice how the guards are level 55. That was a level 1 zombie. Um, the guards are there to kind of protect you, give you kind of like a safe place to actually be if you get overwhelmed. But also, if uh, alliance players, for example, were to try to attack this area, um, there's some high-level guards here, which are going to make it a little bit more difficult for them. But if they're level 60, which is the level cap in Classic WoW, then uh, they're going to be able to get through those guards pretty easily if they really wanted to. And there we go. Grab that. Now, one thing I did have learned is if you go ahead and sit, you tend to regen your uh, mana a little bit faster if you sit, which is nice. And it's also, when you see an enemy like this that's in uh, that has yellow as the, around their name, that means they're basically passive right now. I mean, you can't attack them, but they're not going to attack you unless you attack them first. If they're red, they're going to attack you like no matter what if you get too close. And if they're green, that means they're friendly. So green, good. Red, bad. Yellow means they're basically neutral. We're just going to go ahead and just stab right now. Try to get some mana back. And as you can see, when that uh, is... Um, fade out means we basically have absolutely no uh we have no mana we can't even cast as well if we wanted to and grab the copper there we go we're slowly building up copper here and we're about to get our first level we're level one right now about to hit level two which would be nice i should just uh instead of doing that i should just like melee that person save myself some mana so, Wretched Zombies. So, here's going to be the Smith. We're going to be looking for those Rattle Cage Skulls around here. Just saying to get mana back. And I'm just going to move slightly away from this person so that uh, they take a little bit longer to actually get over to me. And let's melee for the final hits here. Oh, dodging. There is There are weapon skills in this game. You have reputations and you have skills. There's skills in your particular class and skills with particular weapons like daggers, your defense, which is going to make it so uh, higher defense makes you harder to hit. And we got our first level right there. There we go. We're now level two. That increases our skill in demonology and destruction. And it's also going to increase our stamina, our intellect, and our spirit. And it's also going to give us 15 hit points and 23 ma uh, 15 maximum hit points and uh, 23 maximum mana increase, which is nice. Having more mana is obviously pretty good if you're a warlock. Just go ahead and just kill these guys off here. We won't be able to get two of these off, but we did a good amount of damage to them. And now we're just going to attack. And as you can see here in the bottom right, your skill in daggers is increasing. So the more you use your daggers, the more skill you're going to get. Although ideally, you're not going to be doing too much meleeing as a ranged DPS. Here's going to be one of those rattle cage enemies we were talking about. So let's sit for a second, get our mana back. Notice how it is level three, so therefore it's going to have more health and hit a little bit harder. But just hope he doesn't resist anything. Yep, it resisted that as soon as I said it. All right. We're going to be doing this. And our auto attacks, he's going to be parrying. We do have enough mana to get another uh, Shadow Bolt off. Don't resist. There we go. And one more should do it. There we go. More XP. And there's one of our three skulls. Inside the smith here. I love the art style, especially of the World of Warcraft. I mean, it's so good, especially the old classic zones like this. Even the retail game, there's a lot of newer zones. I mean, there's been so many expansions, but there's a lot of stuff from the base game, like base vanilla World of Warcraft, like this area, for example, as well as the exact same art assets from like 2004 and stuff. And it's kind of cool to be able to go back to those old zones and kind of just see everything. Here's another one of those uh, Rattle Cage skeletons. And you are not so tough when you don't resist my stuff, huh? There's our second skull. We still have to kill what would it be four more wretched and then two more mindless zombies. Here's a wretched right here, wretched right there. That's a rattle cage. Let's go to the rattle cage first. Wait for the mana to come back a little bit. We can drink right here, the refreshing spring bar to get mana back faster. But I'm trying to save that a little bit for when we really kind of need it. And there's going to be our third skull. Nice. Level 2 Wretch Zombie. 
Oh, you would resist the first one. So the higher your skill in different things, so Shadow Bolt in Classic is part of Destruction. The higher my skill in Destruction, the less uh, likely they're going to be to like dodge my attacks and stuff like that. I'm not, I don't think it affects resisting, though. Now, just to kind of show you, let's just go ahead and use this one to wait for it. But you get 151 mana back over 18 seconds. I only have 133 maximum mana. So, uh, drinking is going to be able to restore that pretty quickly. So, it's kind of good to keep those items, which you can either find off enemies sometimes or buy from vendors. Oh, nope. Don't, ca don't waste a Shadow Bolt on this one. It's got barely any health whatsoever. So, you might as well just melee it down at this point. And we got pants there. They're going to be mail again, which is nice that we're actually getting these drops because these drops are going to be things that we can sell to vendors and get some early copper and then use that to be able to do some other things. And there we go. Mushroom cap, which is going to allow us to eat. Not bad. All right, we still need two more mindless and one more wretched. Probably should wait to get a little bit more mana first, but it's fine. And just made, it's, this one's only level one, so uh, less experience than normal, but also easier to kill for the quest. And quest XP is obviously pretty good, but a lot of your experience in classic World of Warcraft, anyway, is going to be you uh, grinding mobs like this, just killing enemies and stuff. Because keep in mind, this is an MMO, and it's an old school RPG style game that was designed in 2004. It's a little bit different in retail. There's a lot more quests and the quests are a lot more interesting and varied and stuff like that. But in classic, like the original base version of the game, like we're playing right now. Um, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot there. A buckler, interesting. Rogues used to be able to use this, I think, but it's a shield essentially, which gives you one block and 12 armor. That's more for uh, warriors, paladins, things like that. Um, we already have our, oh, we only need one more mindless. There we go. Three copper and a mushroom cap. All right. So now we get to go back up here. You check out the map. It's not going to show us where to go. You basically have, basically have to remember where uh, you picked up the quest and then run back to it. Oh, now we've done this. Now we've leveled up. A new quest is available from Novice Elrath. All right. Let's go ahead and talk to Sarvis here. Quickly. It's unfortunate that the Scourge cannot be brought into the fold. Their large numbers would be useful in the battles ahead. But they will not join us, so they have no choice. So we have no choice but to destroy them. So let's go ahead and check our character out right here. We have no cloak and we have no gloves. The gloves give six armor. The cloak gives five. Let's go ahead and grab the gloves for right now. And we can just go ahead and equip those. And so now we have gloves, and our character is being updated. Two new quests: Tainted Scroll and Rattling the Rattle Cages. Ah, while you're off dealing with the Mindless Scourge, the scroll arrived for you. this scroll arrived for you. I would think it's some matter of importance, as it seems it bears the seal of the Warlock Trainer Maximilian. Okay, this is funny. It would take some time to read. I would take some time to read before heading out again. So, read the Tainted Scroll, then speak to Maximilian Death Knell. So, so Maximilian sent me a scroll, gave it to Shadow Priest Sarvis here. I mean, that guy right there gave you a scroll to deliver to me. Yet, here I am. And you want me to still read it? You can't just tell me what was in it? Okay, fair enough. Go ahead and accept that. <laughs> and rattling the rattle cages. Uh, you show your potential uh, to the Forsaken under normal circumstances, Firestone. Now let's see you under pressure. The Rouse skeletons, more mindless minions of the Lich King, are a tougher foe than the zombies you have faced thus far. Again, thin their numbers and prove yourself to the Forsaken. Do not tarry. Uh, once you are done, speak to me again. So kill 12 rattle cage, uh, rattle cage skeletons, then return. And for that, there's some boots and then some other stuff that we can't use. So basically, we're going to be taking the boots, which give us 7 armor as compared to the Acolyte's shoes that we start off with that give us literally nothing. Alright, I want to go ahead and read that note. We might as well go ahead and read it. Oh! So this is what uh, the scroll that Maximilian sent to deliver to me. An awful predicament to find ourselves in, isn't it, Firestone? Plagued by the foul prince, ostracized, words are hard, and spurned by our own loved ones. Keep in mind, we're now undead humans, so the living humans basically hate us because we're undead. Um, so ostracized and spurned by our own loved ones. We finally have our own will thanks to the beautiful Sylvanas, but what does that afford us now? I'm having a hard time reading with this font here. Slaves to a different master is still a slaves, or so I say. 
But what if we were the masters? Yes, you know what I mean, don't you? We are even more separated from the rest of the Forsaken Firestone, and that is why we must speak further and find me in the church in death now. So he's talking about what if we were the masters over the different kinds of um, demons that we could spawn into the world being warlocks. Like, we're being ostracized and we're outcasts already from, like, our loved ones because we are dead, right? We, we were dead and we were resurrected. Uh, humans hate undead, and so that's already a thing. And now we're even more ostracized because we're warlocks and we deal with demons and shadowy magic and things like that. So we could talk to him right now, but I want to talk to Venya here first, honestly, what because she's the one that gave us the quest to be able to summon our imp. So your power is little now, though I suspect you already sense the possibilities. Even the dead might feel alive with that power coursing through us. Though you are still untested and young in your learning, you have proven that you possess sufficient ability to master the summoning and binding of an imp. Do not be deceived by an imp's size, so it lacks physical strength. It possesses powers and a cleverness that will serve you well. Attend me carefully, Firestone, for I will not repeat this lesson, and I will leave its mastery to you. So we're about to learn the ability Summon Imp, which summons an imp under the command of the Warlock. Embrace the shadow. And we leveled up by completing that quest. Very, very nice. So now, under Demonology, we have an ability called Summon Imp. I'm just going to go ahead and put this right here. I'll, I'll, I'll rearrange like my bars and stuff like that later. But let's go ahead. Before we go talk to the uh, trainer here, let's go outside just because I want to do it right here. And we're going to summon our very first imp into the world. Keep in mind, we will always summon the same imp from the Twisting Nether. And I wonder what the imp's name is going to be because all the imps have their own name. Gelnam. What a name. <laughs> Ziguri is the name of my imp in uh, the bait, the actual, like, um, the retail game, not the classic version of the game. So, Gelnam is going to be our minion here. Now we have a pet bar up above. We can order the pet to attack. We can order it to stay. We can order it to follow us around. And it's going to cast Firebolt. You can make it so it doesn't cast it, or you can make it so it just auto casts it on its own, which means it's going to be dealing 6 and 9 damage. So, when we start attacking things, our imp is going to fight with us as well. So, pretty nice. And you can also set it to be passive. You can set it to be aggressive and start aggroing things. <clears throat> All sorts of stuff you can do there. Maximilian, the Warlock Trainer. All right. So, let's go ahead and grab this. Tainted Scroll. I bid you welcome, sister. I knew you would come. It was only a matter of time. Well, I said interest to you, didn't it? I, I hit a chord. Something inside you knew what I claimed was truth. Good. Know this, though. I am no traitor to Sylvanas. If anything, she would appreciate my claims, considering it was her own beliefs that has put the Forsaken in the position it is now. I mentioned the slave still being a slave, no matter the master. Do you remember? We both know that it is that type of control, that type of power, that now drives us. We seek to have creatures serve us. We know we are more powerful and deserve more respect than others give us. And so now we look to take it. I'll be your ally in this struggle. The struggle for our own freedom. Freedom to seek our own allegiances. When you feel ready, return to me and I will teach you all I know. So basically that's his fancy way of saying, come back to him periodically because he's the warlock trainer and he's the guy we learn stuff from. So let's go ahead and talk to him again. I'm going to go ahead and unfilter unavailable stuff. So now, because we've leveled up quite a bit, we have the ability to learn immolate which is going to be a new spell it's going to burn enemies for nine fire damage and then an additional 20 fire damage over the course of 15 seconds it's going to cost uh currency to actually be able to do this right now we have 76 copper it costs 10 copper to learn this so we can actually afford it but as you get into the later levels of the game some of the spells are kind of expensive and sometimes you can't quite afford to learn some of the better versions of the spells that you've learned or even new spells which becomes an issue so you have to like go out there and farm gold and stuff like that by killing mobs, doing quests, and doing all sorts of stuff out in the world. But right now, we can afford it. Let's go ahead and learn Immolate. There we go. And so now we have it. We can open up our spell book. And I'm going to put it on three, because that's what it is for me in the retail version of the game. It just, that's where I've always put Immolate. I bound to my three key, and that just uh, seems pretty natural to me. But now we have a new quest here. Here's Isabella, who's going to be a mage trainer. This is the trainer for priests, and there's going to be, like, warrior trainers, all sorts of other trainers for the other classes the Forsaken can be. But let's go ahead and talk to Novice Elrith here. The Damned. My duties include tending to our wounded warriors, tailoring armor and cloths, and... Assisting Shadow Priest Sarvis with whatever he might need. From the look of it, you'll be enlisted in this service also, hunting the mindless ones. 
if I know his mind. Reading is, wow, fun. <laughs> Another thing I, I would like to point out is there's a lot more voice acting in the newer versions of the game. There's still a lot of reading like this, but there's also a lot more voice acting among the NPC characters and stuff like that. But back in the old school version of the game, very little voice acting whatsoever. But the introduction was obviously pretty damn awesome with the voice actor they have there. So from the look of it, you're going to be enlisted in this service also, hunting the mindless ones if I know his mind. Well, if you'd like to stay in one piece, and I have no doubt you do, perhaps I can help. I'm running out of paws and wings, and if you can bring me some, I'll find some armor for you. You'll find a good number of wolves and bats to the south. So kill, get six uh, scavenger paws and six dust, wing bat, uh, dust bat wings, and then we're going to be able to grab either an old leather belt, which we can't use, or bracers, which are basically the same quality as the bracers that we have. Goodbye.